There you go. Hello and welcome back to the Final Whistle podcast. My name is Harry McBain and it's Bobby Addison and Adam O'Connell here. Uh, we've got some, we normally have to find a few topics to talk about, but I mean, it's pretty obvious today what we're going to be talking about. The European Super League uh, and Jose being sacked really is, is what we're here for. Um, we'll start really simple. European Super League, the, the teams so far involved. Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Spurs, Arsenal, Liverpool, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, Inter Milan, AC Milan and Juventus. Uh, Adam and Bobby are both, you're obviously both fans of those teams involved, whereas I'm not. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got a neutral view, but um, we'll go and hear what your views are as fans. So Adam, what's your thoughts as a Liverpool fan of joining this Super League? Well, I think my opinion will be the same with every other fan around the world currently. It's a stupid idea. It shouldn't happen. It's going to turn football fans, long-life football fans, away from the sport because it's going to turn boring. I, like Jamie Carragher said in the pre-match interview um, with, I think, it was Gary Neville, he was saying the last time before Clock Turn Oak came over, last time we played Real Madrid was 2009. And obviously now because we... We could get Champions League football. We start playing them often, which is the fun in the Champions League and Europa League. You play teams that you don't often play. And if mm-hmm. we get all put in the same league, it's going to get boring watching Liverpool versus Real Madrid. And I think I think that's one of the reasons why it shouldn't be shouldn't be made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think it's, that was the kind of the point that Klopp had made last year of that we don't want... Who wants to see Liverpool play Real Madrid every 10 years? It's not going to be very interesting. Obviously, Bobby... What are your mm-hmm. thoughts as an Arsenal fan? I mean, I think I kind of echo what Gary, uh, Gary Neville was saying about like football as a as a thing is just the whole pyramid system that we've fought for and had for 150 years is part of our national identity. It's part of our culture. And I think governments in all the countries that these teams are signed up for and are going to step in because it's very important to every country because the amount of like, money and just the general consensus of like how important it is to the, the 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 people of the of Europe and I think it's just absurd that these teams can be so arrogant and self-proclaimed in the fact that they think they're greater clubs when I think you could argue many of those teams could be taken out for a team like yours Nottingham Forest that ha- arguably have better European uh, qualifications than a lot of the teams that have put themselves forward I mean I don't really understand why they feel like they need to be there. And obviously we know why they feel like they need to be there is because they know they have the money and people I've seen so many, like, not, I'm going to say that probably the demographic is little children are like, Oh, this is going to be great. Super league. Why do you hate it? But the, the whole problem is like, if this happens, these teams for like, think that they can go away or the owners of the teams can go into this league and make but tons of money, like hundreds of millions and think they're going to stroll into their domestic leagues with this huge advantage and everyone else is going to be totally fine with that when it's not going to happen. And I was also watching an AFTV live thing where if this happens, you're going to start seeing the Americanization of football as NFL has had. And you see games such as in the NFL where you can't get relegated and you have things where NFL is played in Tottenham Stadium which is like, it just totally ruins the community feel because that could mean that, you know, Man City against Man United, we end up being played in Qatar or Abu Dhabi and Liverpool games end up being played in Boston and uh, Arsenal games might be played in this new stadium that Stan Kroenke has built in America. And I think just because all of this money is being pumped in, I think we can just see football go onto that, like, I don't know, that path. And if we don't stop it, that's where it's going to end up basically yeah definitely it's it's worrying the um amount of the amount of the uh, the size of the effect that this could have on everything because the power that they've necessarily the power but the impact they have on the english game with the money that comes down through from the premier league to lower clubs obviously helps them and if you take that away then you'll be looking mm-hmm. at even more lower league teams dropping off because they can't afford it. They, some of them can't afford it already and we're seeing them going bust, like Berry went bust and then if they leave, even more could. Um, the bit that's confusing, I think, it, it's a bit hard to get your head around of obviously the fact that you've got these 12, so far 12 uh, founding members and it's set to be 15 founding members out of 20. 
that cannot be relegated. And yeah. it makes the league, I feel, so pointless because why would you... Obviously, the, the way they want to do it is have two leagues or two groups out of the 10, so 10 in each group, and then whoever finishes the top of them go to like playoffs. And I think that's how the MLS mm-hmm. works. Um, yeah. But the fact that if you have, let's say, those teams in there anyway, and even though they're not, let's say, PSG, Dortmund, Bayern, but also the other three founding members who could not get relegated, you then put in the other teams, the other five that have qualified magically for this league. Yeah. And let's say they do really well and maybe um, let's go with an example of Arsenal. Let's say they lost every game that they played in that league. They Beautiful. could, they could, let's say um, Ajax or whatever won all the games. Ajax mm-hmm. could still leave the league, even though exactly, yeah. they've, they've won it. It's so pointless. Just the only reason Arsenal there is because they had the money to, to start it up. Yeah, and it's it's caused the the hashtag boycott the super uh, boycott super league get to go around social media, and we're seeing the mm-hmm. there's the slogan of the created by the the poor and like stolen by the rich. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Do we think that this is people will if they do do it? Do you think people will stop supporting their teams, Bobby? Because if you're not gonna have the interest of the supporters they might as well go somewhere else so i saw somewhere saying liverpool fans could go and support southampton as it's the b team yeah i mean as an actual fan all day i've just been like so if i'm honest upset and not really i don't really know how to feel about it because it's yeah. easy to say you can just go and or just support another team but that's not how something works like if you've been a fan of that team your whole life and you care about that football team it's not that as easy as it is to be said and just move on. And it's like, I think they don't understand how important underdog stories are in football to people. Like, do you, do you ever remember a game when Manchester City beat West Brom? Do you remember a game where Liverpool beat, I don't know, like Bristol? But do you do remember a game where not Liverpool for beat, beat Arsenal? Fulham? Nottingham Forest beat Arsenal. Barcelona come back and beat PSG. Uh, Ajax not Real Madrid out of the Champions League. And the whole point of the system of the pyramid football is that any young kid can aspire to be a professional football like Ronaldo, like Messi, like, you know, I made the ex- example of Ollie Watkins who came up from yeah, Exeter City, then went through, went to Brentford, had a fantastic season and now he's gone to Aston Villa and he's playing football for England and he could realistically be playing Champions League football if he gets a new to club but things like that won't be able to happen and I think the whole idea of monetizing football in this American way is just going to kill the the, the the love of football and the culture of what football is and it's not just a business it's what is behind it and the fans. Yeah definitely and I think we saw the first almost you could say the casualty of the Super League today um, Jose Mourinho sacked by Tottenham Mm-hmm. There are various rumours of why he left the club or was sacked by the club. Um, they've put it, people putting it down to poor results, which they have been having. They are in yeah. a cup final though next uh, next Sunday and Jose is known for being a cup final specialist. Um, yeah. There was also rumours that he refused to take training today because in protest of this, um, obviously some places dispute that, but... Adam, do you think that other managers, like we might see if this does go ahead, the likes of Klopp who are anti-Super League and maybe even Pep Guardiola, but we don't know, big managers and players walking away because they don't want to face the consequences? Uh, Yeah, no, yeah, I can. Um, Because I think, like like you said, a lot of players don't want to face the consequence of not being able to play for their home country, not being able to play Champions League football or even Europa League football to anyone where they go, if they do go, that is. And I think, like, as you said, the Jurgen Klopp, like, I saw this thing and, like, Mane, Salah, Milner, Klopp are all going to leave Liverpool if they do do it. And I, th- I think, like, fair enough. From a fan's point of view, I don't want them to go, obviously, because they're great players and they're great manager. But at the same time, I, I do want them to go because I'd rather see them play in more competitions. And I just don't think it's fair on the players and the manager because they don't get a say in it, really. Because the club owners are like, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to like do a lot of a lot of managers have come out and they've said that they had no idea that any of this happening. Mick, uh, Arteta said it, Tuchel said it, now Klopp said it that 
it all is a little bit shady and it's all happening like behind the scenes where all these deals are happening over zoom mm. meetings or whatsapp calls from these uh like families of owners that own these companies and not even the managers or the players of the football team are even being told about it yeah mm. and one of the things that's quite interesting when you look at it is the the fact that you we've seen the clubs like Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund saying we'll not compete in this mm-hmm. uh, and if you look closely the German football model that 51% of the club's ownership is by the fans 49% is by people that investors putting in money so that the fans have the final decision. Um, do you think that's a mm-hmm. system that should be implemented, not just into English football, but into to all leagues? Yeah, definitely. I think so. What do you think, Adam? Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think I think it's a good it's a good way to handle like situations like, for instance, like the super the super league. Because if the let's say the the way the clubs make the revenue is from fans, because obviously the the fans pay the money for descriptions for. Sky Sports for BT Sports in when the games when they can go into stadium they can go into the stadiums as well. That's how mm-hmm. the clubs get their revenue. And if if club, and it, when the clubs do this and if it does happen, they're going to lose a lot of that revenue because people don't want to be saying seeing Liverpool versus Real Madrid constantly, 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 or Arsenal versus Tottenham day in day out. Yes, it's a yes again like it's a derby, but it's going to get boring after a while. One because how football's being played nowadays, and also because they've seen it forty seven times already. Yeah, in the, in the past year. Mm, so if yeah. the fans do get a say in uh, decisions like this, then I feel, uh, then yeah, I, th- I feel uh, people will be more enjoyable, will enjoy watching football more than they are at the moment. Yeah, and one of the the key things that I think we saw today with an action from the fans was the Liverpool fans request, well, taking down the banners inside Anfield or taking down the the flags that they've put up on the seats and everything on the stands in an act of protest they actually taken them down i think they've taken they've either requested them for to them to be taken down and given back or to yeah or they have taken them down because they don't in a i mean process. how would they be able to get into the stadium to do that i, I just, just presume they'd request ask the club to give them whoever's yeah, to yeah. give it whoever's given the banners will want them back mm-hmm. it's it's just really surprising we've seen uefa and fifa and other governing bodies, uh, the EFL have shared a statement this evening as well, con- basically saying that it's they don't support it at all. Um, UEFA threatening bans from domestic leagues and European competitions, and then bans on players from FIFA that they wouldn't be able to play for in like World Cups. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a lot. There was talk earlier that is this a real thing or do you think it's a move from UEFA uh, a move to get UEFA to react and give them more power in the Champions League yeah that's originally I think what it was supposed to be and I think a lot of people last night when it was first emerging you know Gary Neville was talking about it on Burnley game I think a lot of people thought this was just another tactic from the big owners because obviously it was proposed that UEFA today were meant to be announcing their Champions League changes Obviously, they have announced it. It's a little bit weird. I don't want really to get into that right now. No. But a lot of people thought that that was just going to be a tactic to drive up the interest from these big, so-called the biggest clubs of these top 12 to like get more from the Champions League. I don't know, maybe get more from winnings or revenue because they deserve it because they bring in more viewership and stuff, which you know doesn't really support the morals of the game. And I think we all thought that was the tactic. And now it comes out when you see that you know, Agnelli, the chairman, has left his role at the ECA, which is like the body that, you know, handles all the European clubs. And obviously, Ed Woodward steps down in UEFA. Uh, Arsenal. I think it's been I, yeah. Teshim, the Arsenal guy, stepped down from ECA as well. And I don't, if I'm honest, I don't exactly know what it is or what that means, but it can't be positive. It's obviously showing they really do want this to happen. And I think Gary Neville said that when he saw, when he woke up this morning and he saw the Glazers' name on it, he's worried because he knows that if his name is on it he's not stupid and he thinks that that could really lead to something I mean it's hard to believe that every single person in the country including the government and obviously royalty we've seen it every fan doesn't want it to happen but if these six people that have the money do want it to happen they can make it happen yeah it's really worrying they've also looked at consequences to these clubs this season um Mm -hmm. the premier league at the moment, without the top, well, without the big six, um, West Ham top of the league by nine points, Leicester in second, Leeds in third, 
Aston Villa in fourth and Everton fifth. Um, Leicester second then? Well, yeah, it looks like it um, without oh, right. the, the big six in there. But I think that's also taking away fixtures against the, the big six. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's what that uh, that's showing. And another statement that had come out or a leak that had come out was from a UEFA member that Chelsea, Real Madrid and Man City are reportedly set to be kicked out of the Champions League this week, which means PSG would win the Champions League by default. Um, I don't think they could do that, to be honest. Yeah, that I was just, would be no. a bit weird, wouldn't it? Do you think, but if they've got the powers to in a breach of uh, a contract or a rules, do you think that would be a fair way to do it, Adam? Because they're, they're it's saying, oh, we don't want to do it. So UEFA can just go, all right, fine then. You don't want to be a part of it. Just go. Mm-hmm. I, th- I feel I feel it could be fair, but it it depends when the Super League is put in place. If it put, if it's put in place before the match has been played, or if, even before the final, then yeah, fair enough. You you, you can do that because you uh, it's allowed because the for the rules state you join the Super League, you're out of all the competitions, right? So mm-hmm. if if that if I if it's put in place beforehand before it's all played, then yeah, fair enough. If it's not put in place before said games then I don't think like they should do it because it, it isn't fair on them, on the clubs. I get that they want to do it, but at the same time, the players and the managers don't want to do it, do they? So, yeah. yeah. And bringing in the, apparently the Premier League are going to have a meeting with the other 14 Premier League teams later this week to decide. And apparently a lot of those clubs um, are calling for them to be given point deductions um, and other consequences. Do you think mm. that their right to do that, Bobby, or do you think this, whereas last season when we had the whole debacle, debacle with continuing the season where West Ham and some teams lower down wanted to scrap relegation so they could be safe, do you think that could be the same thing here if they're giving, let's give them a points deduction so we're safe? Is, is it really fair? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not really sure because I think this, what I was watching Monday Night Football when they had the Crystal Palace chairman on actually and he was talking about him personally, even though they, they're abhorrent to the idea that these clubs want to come away, they know that it's not everyone... Like, the decision to go into this league by the clubs isn't a reflection of the opinions of everyone in the clubs at all. It's the owners' decisions and the owners' own stupid ideals that they want to fulfil. And I think, you know, the other 14 teams, as much as they, some may hold a grudge and may feel they want to get punished, I think they will would like to have the big six in the Premier League because, one, it creates that balance of, you know, underdogs versus the big big boys, if you like, and it also brings revenue in that can be passed down to those clubs if they do get relegated because he was pretty blunt with it and he said he doesn't know, he can't guarantee that Crystal Palace won't get relegated. He can't guarantee they won't be playing uh, European football in the next however many years. So, obviously, we want as much money in the big clubs in the Premier League so that it can all be funneled down into the lower league so that our system can continue to allow football in the country to thrive as it does and it has done for so many years. Yeah, one of the things, especially when you look at it from a neutral point of view, obviously from you two supporting the clubs will have a different opinion because you wouldn't necessarily be involved in the league if you were kicked out. But there's a part of me that wants to see a Premier League without those big six just to see a bit more competition come into it, to see maybe the likes of West Ham winning the league. We saw it with Leicester breakthrough and they've broken into the top, however, um, like the top four or whatever. But to see clubs come up, and especially as a championship team, if there's no big six to come up to the Premier League with the mindset of we could beat anybody, really. Mm. Whereas if there's more competition, we could see a different team win the league each season um, it would be much more entertaining, but but then I guess the only issue with that is obviously I, I don't as an Arsenal fan I don't want us to get kicked out because that's just like my life dream to see Arsenal win the Premier League. But then again, you see that you know uh, if you do remove the big six, as you said for the first few years, I think it will be competitive. I think you know I'm not in disagreement. I would love to see that. I think that would be brilliant. But then you see, I think you will see the bigger teams with the big owners like Leicester, West Ham. And they might just make a repeat of what's happened with the big six. And they might just have the same situation where they get bigger, they make more money and they feel entitled to things that the big six owners feel entitled to now. Because you can't guarantee that when 
if they get kicked out and there's a new league, everyone's going to be ha- get on happy as Larry because there will be teams that are currently bigger, like Leicester, like West Ham, that are going to do better. And it's obviously going to always have better teams and worse teams in the league. Yeah, it's 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 so strange that you look at it from, let's say even say yesterday morning or the um, or Saturday, the thought of not having the big six in the Premier League was it was never like a, no one ever thought of that would ever happen. Yesterday evening, dropping the news that this and now all these conspiracies come out. There was uh, or ideas coming out. Um, I've got one saved uh, here on my phone. I found that someone had come up with an idea. Why don't we bring um, Celtic and Rangers into the Premier League finally, give them their go, see them yeah. th- without that competition, but also to promote um, teams from the championship because uh, we could add the top four from the championship and Celtic and Rangers and then just promote four um, from and re- relegate four. Um, but that would have to be something that's implemented, I think, over time. Um, and obviously that would affect Scottish football, so that probably wouldn't be a good idea. Yeah. Um, do you think, well, let's go with a general s- statement for, from both of you is, do you think, A, this will happen? Um, and do you think that all these threats coming from above in the big governing bodies are true? I'll go at Adam. Um, I think, like Bob said earlier, it's a very high possibility because if the owners of the clubs have the money and they want to do it, they can do it if they want to because they have the money. And I think it is quite a big threat to football because the football is going to lose so many fans like that they have now. There's millions of fans all over the world and they the numbers are just going to drop, drop and drop when they see play, teams playing the same team over and over and nothing's changing. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Bob? Uh... I don't obviously don't want it to happen, but if I'm honest, it's 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 really hard to figure out what will happen because I think maybe if the government passed that, I don't know if it's a bill or whatever for it mm. to maybe stop it from happening, then that might help. And obviously, there is a so such a larger amount of people coming together the same they don't want it, and I think the one factor that could push it from not happening is the players and the managers of the teams come out and say no because if they go on strike what do the owners realistically do if the United players go on strike then we see that gap that has been bridged between the players and the fans be filled in and hopefully as because I think we've really seen a few people like Meza Ozil spoke out about it Podolski I think Bruno Fernandes uh, Daniel Podence of Wolves they've all said that they don't want it, and obviously the Leeds players tonight as well. And hopefully that can be enough to stop it from happening. But I, we can't honestly say. I think that was it. That was a very good move from Bruno Fernandes to see a, a player from the one of the teams that is going mm-hmm. a, into this possibly going and basically putting out a statement that that doesn't. That's not what they want. Um, yeah. So it's promising. You don't know obviously what that could mean because where would you then go? You'd probably either go and have a super giant team like PSG and Bayern and whoever just dominating everything if they get all the other good players that want to leave um yeah unless that super league collapses i mean the only thing i can link possibly or think this is like for a fan of one of those teams um is what was the year it must have been 2016 um and forest were like threatened with going into administration and thinking right who else i don't i don't want to but if my if forests disappear, who am I gonna support? Who am I gonna mm-hmm. follow? I don't think I I don't think I could, as you said earlier. I don't think it's simple as just picking a team. I don't think you could just support someone in the team that you did way that you did before. Um, yeah, I think as you said there, I think th- there is a chance that we can stop this if all the fans and we need players to speak up. We need managers to speak up against this. Um, if we if that's the worrying thing is you've only seen certain players come up against it. We need someone like Ronaldo or Messi to come up against it. The mm-hmm. chances of that are highly unlikely because um, of obviously they've probably got contracts and everything um, that mm-hmm. they have to follow strictly. But we need someone big to come out and that's actually involved to go against this. Thomas Tuchel was in a press conference earlier and basically refused to comment because he doesn't yeah. really know about it but we need someone to come out I think Klopp nearly did it this afternoon 
Um, he's I think it was holding quite himself close. back probably in, until he hears more. No, maybe. yeah, because he did say I need more information. Um, but I think we need someone big to come out and go. No, if you do this, I'm I'm gone. Um, yeah, and that will be a, a, a really big factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's going to happen over time, anyways. Like bit more players and play, like like you were saying earlier, players are going to more and more players are going to come out and say, yeah, I don't want this to happen. But like you said, they need more information because they can't just come out and say, I don't want this because of the one reason, because there might be other factors that the public still don't know yet that they're, they're still keeping behind. Or even the managers and the players might not know because obviously that it's all going on behind the scenes, isn't it? So, mm, yeah. I mean, if we know anything, this isn't going to be settled in the next few days. It's going to take months because we all yeah. know they're going to have the best lawyers on their cases to try and get it pushed through and it will... It'll be a long haul, but hopefully a strike can help towards the cause of saving football from yeah. doom. Uh, and and we'll close with a final smaller thing that's non-Super League related. Two finals have been set. Obviously, Carabao Cup final. We've already mm-hmm. got the teams, Man City and Spurs. And now we have the FA Cup final, Chelsea versus Leicester. Um, just wondering what your predictions for both of them, um, not necessarily scoreline wise, but winners wise uh, for each one, mm-hmm. Bob. Uh, I think FA Cup final. I'm going to say Leicester. I, I, I'm I'm not totally confident, but I'm just going to say Leicester because I would love to see that. And because like that. that's that's Leicester in European football, and also I'd like to see. I I don't know. I think maybe the reason Tottenham sacked Jose is because you have that new manager bounce and maybe the players will want to play for the Ryan Mason. Cause I think he got, he, I think he played for Tottenham and he had some like really career threatening injury. Yeah. So now if they play for him, they could be city, but I actually do think city are going to win. So I'm going to say yeah. city and then Leicester. Yeah, I, I agree. Bob, but I think I'm going to give you a scoreline as well. Three, one city two one Leicester. Yeah, it's it's close. I think the only reason I don't think you get a new manager bounce with Spurs is the length of time they actually have until the final, considering it's Sunday. Um, yeah, that's true. Which yeah. was worrying about the Jose. That's why I think it's more Super League related or something else issue related because mm-hmm. he's a specialist in finals. Um, well, I mean, if the Super League comes, Levy's got the money to afford that 30 million to sack Jose. Yeah, incredible. I think City will win that. Um, I've got down here 2-0, but it might be closer than that. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I want Leicester to win the FA Cup. Uh, I have a feeling Chelsea will win it 2-1, just because Mm -hmm. Tuchel has got them playing very good football. um, Yeah, that is true. And they're sick, but I want Leicester to win it. We'll see what happens. Um, As Bobby said, this is going to unfold over the next few months. So that can only mean one thing that you have to do um, is to either subscribe. You got to like it because otherwise, you know, Super League might happen. Um, You wait for notifications on, guys. Notifications on. And if you're on uh, Spotify or Apple, make sure to follow the podcast because why not? It's it's the it's good. It's for a good cause. And if you if you follow us or subscribe, then the Super League might not happen because we have the power. We've got <laughs> we've got the voices high up in UEFA. Thank you, everybody, for listening. That was the final whistle.